Wonderful, just in time. Please sit down. I was about to open the Book of Heroes. I wonder what crazy adventure Andrew and Mark will get into. Chapter 6 Spring dance this Friday? Andrew exclaimed looking at the bright yellow paper. What a way to start a Monday! Andrew continued to stare at the paper with great despair. Yeah dog, didn't you know? Mark asked approaching Andrew. Andrew shook his head. When was it posted? Last week. Hey, aren't you grounded? No, Lily let me off for good behavior and a good grade on my algebra test. Anyway, why is there a dance when seniors have prom coming up in May? It's for everyone, idiot. Mark answered. I'm not an idiot. Andrew replied angrily. I'm just out the loop. Mark <laughs> laughed. What's so funny? Andrew asked angrily. You're wondering if you should take Rosa to the dance. Andrew's face turned red. Am not. Just ask her. Replied Mark. He looked down the hallway. Here she comes now. Hey guys. Rosa said cheerfully. Hey Drew, are you going to the dance? Yeah. You want to go together? I'd rather go with you than these clowns. Pick me up at seven, okay? Andrew watched as Rosa walked off to her class. He couldn't believe that Rosa wanted to go with him to the dance. He felt like jumping for joy. But he had to keep his cool and not embarrass himself in front of everyone. Way to go, Romeo! Mark said sarcastically, grabbing Andrew's shoulder. You really know how to get the ladies. Shut up, Mark. Andrew said, shoving him a little. Hey, you guys going to the dance? A voice suddenly called out. It was DJ, along with Josh. Yeah, we're going. Mark answered. You guys going? DJ nodded. I have to. I'm the one who made the spring dance. Really? Asked Andrew with a surprised look. Yeah. DJ answered. It was a miracle that I could get it done by myself. You the man, DJ. Josh replied. Please call me Yeshua. Said DJ taking a bow. And he <coughs> laughed while Mark and Josh both raised an eyebrow. At least someone gets the reference. Replied DJ with a disappointed tone. Shows how religious you are. During fifth period, Andrew tried to pay attention to his art teacher. He still had a lot on his mind. Besides Rosa, Andrew wondered what Hidishi was planning. He began to remember what one of his goons said to him. Mr. Hidishi is a very powerful man. Your power alone can't stop him. His words seemed to play back in Andrew's brain over and over. If this guy is as powerful as he says he is, then Andrew and Mark might be in trouble. As Andrew slowly came back to reality, he could hear his art teacher calling his name. Andrew! She called out and pointing to a painting on the projection screen asked, What is the name of this painting? Andrew stared at it long and hard. He wasn't sure what it was. It looked like a blurry jukebox with a disfigured guy standing next to it. Andrew took a guess. Jukebox by Lawrence, he answered. Correct, she replied. Andrew gave a sigh of relief. Hidishi got off the phone with Sergeant Greggs. According to the results, the blood from the scene matched Andrew's. 
Hideshi ordered Sergeant Greggs to send the remaining blood to a special lab while he waited for the DNA results to come in. Seconds later, there was a knock upon the door. Enter, said Hideshi. The door opened, revealing a guy in a suit. You wanted to see me, sir? A guy in a suit asked. Gather your best men. I have a job for you. Udishi said, staring at the window. What is it? He asked. You will know soon enough. Udishi answered. Now go. The guy left the room, closing the door behind him. Time to test a theory. Udishi said evilly. School ended with a loud ring. Waves of teenagers flooded the hallways and quickly flowed out into the streets. On their way out, Mark and Andrew saw Emily and Josh talking by the front gate. Emily quickly approached them. I can't believe Josh, she said with a displeased tone. He has the nerve to ask me about my sex life. Mark and Andrew both raised their eyebrows. I wasn't trying to be nosy, Josh replied with a laugh. I just read something from a magazine and wanted her opinion on it. Still, you don't ask women about that said Andrew. He may isn't that kind of woman to kiss and tell. You're right, Andrew, replied Emily. What I do with my boyfriend is none of your business. But you don't do anything with him, said Josh. You're still a ver- Ow! <gasps> Josh fell to his knees, clenching his stomach. Mark and Andrew both watched as Josh struggled to get up from Emily's powerful blow. For the first time, Andrew feared Emily. I'm sorry, Josh. Emily exclaimed with a flushed face. I don't like it when people make fun of me about that. Mark squatted next to Josh and poked his cheek several times. Mark glared at Emily. Great, I think you killed him. Beast of the Bronx. Lily and William were watching TV in the living room. As Lily went to the kitchen to get something to drink, the doorbell rang. Confused, William got up and answered the door. He turned the knob. Slam! The stranger broke the door off its hinges, flinging William backwards. Four guys in suits entered the apartment and began destroying the... William, run! Lily shouted. William ran out the door as fast as he could, but one of Where the guys grabbed him. Squirming, the guy carried him off to the elevator. Let go of my son! Lily exclaimed, hitting one of the guys with her fists. Smack! The guy backslapped Lily across the face. He grabbed her by the throat, slamming her against the wall. Blood ran down her mouth as she tried to get free. Stay down! He said as he punched her in the face. Lily fell to the ground unconscious. A note was left on the wall saying, If you ever want to see your bro again, come to the warehouse on Library Avenue. Come alone or else. Hideshi's gang. Mark's kitchen was filled with laughter and lip-smacking as the boys ate. Mark was giving Andrew the highlights on his date with Tracy. So, you tried to take her to Fire and Ice for a little dancing. Andrew said, repeating Mark's statement. Then what happened? I took her to Gardenia to get something to eat. Mark answered, rubbing his stomach. I can still taste the chicken scampi. Then what? This is the good part. After Gardenia, I took Tracy over to the construction site where they're building that new Sears. You know, the one in Yonkers. I know, but how is that romantic? You can get a better view of the stars. Dog, you really suck at dating. Andrew huffed at Mark. Anyway, there we were, sitting on the hood of my car staring at the stars. Tracy and I began to talk about the different constellations. Suddenly Tracy stares into my eyes and smiles. I smile back. Without thinking, I lean forward and lock lips with her. Attention! Mark can't retell a story properly. Please refer to the end of episode 5 for the truth. I'm telling you, dog, it was the greatest kiss in my life. It's the only kiss you ever got in your life. Very funny, replied Mark, shoving Andrew a little. 
Andrew looked at his watch and realized how late it was getting. I better go, Andrew said walking towards the door. I'll see you later. The night air brought an ominous feel to Andrew's senses as he walked home. Trusting his instincts, Andrew ran towards home at top speed. He leaped from roof to roof until he was near his apartment complex. Minutes later Andrew arrived home. He was awestruck by the damage. Andrew saw Lily on the ground and immediately went to her aid. Her face was bruised and a little swollen on her left cheek. She also had a cut on her lips and a gash on her temple. Andrew held her in his arms as she started to come around. What happened? Andrew asked frantically. They took William. She answered in a low voice. Who are they? I don't know. A group of guys dressed in suits. Andrew gnashed his teeth. They were going to pay. Suddenly, Andrew noticed the note on the wall. He read it with tight fists. I'm going to get William, he said. I don't want to lose you too, she said almost crying. Andrew squatted next to her with a smile. I'll come back safe, I promise. He helped Lily to the couch in the living room and even got her a cold, damp washcloth to help wipe her bruised face and reduce the swelling. Once Lily was situated, Andrew ran out the door. Andrew ran back to Mark's house with determination in his eyes. He knocked violently. Mark opened the door with a scared look. Relief and anger came upon him when he saw Andrew standing at his doorstep. Before Mark could utter a word, Andrew told him what happened. Mark's eyes widened. He really wanted to help Andrew. He began to move upstairs. Quickly Andrew grabbed Mark's shoulder, telling him to watch over Lily. Mark refused. If anything goes wrong, I got your back. All right, but you have to be inconspicuous. Andrew said with a sigh. Beast of the Bronx. Library Avenue was located on the south side of Baychester Avenue. The wind blew fiercely as they slowly approached the abandoned looking warehouse. Andrew told Mark to hide near the warehouse while he went inside. Andrew walked up to the door and knocked. One of the guys looked through the peephole with a glare. He opened the door. Andrew walked inside the dark room. He could barely see his hands in front of his face. Suddenly, a light illuminated a portion of the room. Underneath the blinding light was William, who was tied to a chair and the leader of the group. Welcome, said the leader. I see you got our message. Let's get down to business. My boss wants you gone. I will spare the boy's life in exchange for yours. Sure, why not? Andrew replied with a smirk. The leader untied William, telling him to walk to the middle of the room. Now walk over here. The leader called out to Andrew. Andrew followed his direction, walking next to William. Suddenly the sounds of guns being drawn filled the air. The lights went up. Andrew looked around and realized they were surrounded with guns aimed at them. Did you think we would spare the kid's life? The leader asked Andrew. Well, the thought crossed my mind, Andrew said sarcastically. End of the line, kid. Now you die. Well, let me change into something more comfortable, Andrew said smiling. Okami! Suddenly, the same light energy illuminated the warehouse. Mark realized it was time for him to join the party. The light faded. Everyone was frightened. Even William couldn't believe his eyes. Who are you? He managed to say with terrified eyes. It's me, Andrew. Andrew growled. I'll explain later. Right now, I must get you out of here. Immediately, Andrew attacked the nearest guy. His fist met the guy's face. With one punch, the guy went flying. A hailstorm of bullets came towards Andrew. Andrew froze. He dodged at the last moment, leaping and sidestepping in a rhythmic dance. 
While Andrew distracted them, William escaped running to a nearby bush. Suddenly glass shattered everywhere. Everyone stopped and saw Mark, in his panther form, rise from the ground. He smirked as glass continued to fall around him. Nice entrance, Andrew said. A brother gotta make his entrance in style, replied Mark. The remaining guys continued to fire at them. Mark quickly waved his hand to the side. Instantly they were covered by a shadowy wall. The wall absorbed the bullets, suspending them in mid-air. Andrew was amazed to see that Mark could control his powers so quickly. Silence filled the air, followed by rapid clicks. Mark and Andrew both knew the guys were out of ammo. Mark quickly lowered the shadowy wall. Andrew jumped into the air. STRIKING CLAW! He shouted with his hand raised in the air. Andrew's hand turned bright yellow. He waved his glowing hand sideways. Five boomerang-shaped energy waves came crashing down on the guys, flinging them everywhere as the waves exploded. The remaining guys he hit were unconscious and bruised badly. The battle was over. That was fun. Mark said sarcastically. We must find William and tell him everything, said Andrew. <laughs> Surprisingly, William was in the bushes with his head between his legs. Mark and Andrew quickly de-transformed. William looked up at them. How the hell did you do that? It's a long story, replied Mark. You might want to sit down. Andrew explained everything to William. He told him about the tattoos on their backs, Madame Renee, their incredible fighting abilities, and of course, their transformations. Andrew is a werewolf? William asked with his eyes wide open. I knew you were weird, but this takes the cake. Mark just stood there and laughed. Oh, like you're normal. Andrew shot back. It looks like Andrew and Mark are getting the hang of their newfound powers. I'm also glad both William and Lily are safe. But what bothers me are the new henchmen Hideshi hired. Will Andrew and Mark be able to defeat them? Find out next time on Beast of the Bronx. Yeah. Intuition, just wanna follow intuition All my senses tell me I know what you've been thinking I know, I know. I've been feeling, what if we got up, left this party Cause I can see you probably gonna be scrolling feeds all night long and your friends are drunk And the DJ keeps playing the same songs And time isn't moving along so would it be cool to say